Okay, so for my two tools that I'm going to be doing is Google Classroom is my first one, and then my second one is um, social learning. Specifically, I'm doing a pen pal website, um, but there's tons of things, websites out there you can use for social learning. Um, so Google Classroom can be used to create assignments, questions, announcements, um, communicate with your students, let your students communicate um, with their peers, and so on. Um, there is no cost on Google Classroom. I haven't run into anything that I have had to pay for. Um, so starting like down here is um, the assignment and the kids can just click on it um, and it brings up the page right here. They can just take notes on it. Um, I can leave feedback for them. I can see where they're at in their process um, and all of that. They can leave comments down here if they have questions. Um, they can also contact me directly and not leave a comment, but I always encourage them to leave comments because they're probably not the only one who has a question. Um, and then second, you can make announcements. So like right here is my announcement. Um, please have your person selected by the end of the day. That's the person they're gonna be researching. Um, and then a follow-up of the announcement is right here is the question, um, who is the person that you're researching? So they are supposed to leave a comment. Um, and let me know who that person is as well as what country they're from. Um, and then down here, just kind of a quick overview, it's super easy to use. Um, you just click this little plus down in the right hand corner, create announcement, assignment, question, reuse a post. Um, on anything you do, like create an assignment title, you can put instructions for it, a due date, um, and then you can upload any type of um, attachment that you have or anything for that. And then like for question, you can put a question, assignment, you can click what kind of answers, is it a short answer, a multiple choice, um, can the students reply to each other, can they edit their questions, um, just all of that. And then over here on the side just kind of tells you what you have, like upcoming, the kids can see this due on this day. Um, the topic down here, project questions, this is a form um, that I made. If they have any questions, they could just click on it, check the class stream they can um, go there and leave and leave um, questions or anything that they have about the project. Um, and then my next one is this pen pal website, which is really cool. Um, I had never seen it until I was doing this project. Um, and then, so for this one, this isn't the exact project that they're gonna be doing. I'm waiting for the one um, that we're doing to open, but this will give you a good kind of overview of it. Um, but this website can be used for online collaboration, um, research, discussions, kind of inquiry type stuff. Um, so on the teacher side, this is what the teacher would see. And you can join any um, project, they call it up here, that you want your students in. But down here is kind of the back side. The teachers can talk to each other. Uh, like this teacher said, she realizes she's going to have her students on spring break. Um, just kind of stuff like that. And then you can see way down here all the countries of the people that are going to be in your discussion. So for my uh, assignment in particular, I need people from a lot of different countries. So that was really helpful to see, are my kids gonna be discussing with people from a lot of different countries? Um, and then up here, the students, I can just add my students to it. Um, and the students would see kind of this side of it. So you can leave videos, there might already be videos if you just join a project, um, things they can read about, and then here's a short answer for them. Go over here, there's something they can vote on, and then there's a form of why do you think some people discriminate? Like here, they would just leave comments, they can see what other people are going to be doing um, and talking about. And then there's a lot of different tabs, you can sort your information that way. Um, and it's all free. You just have to have approval um, from your administration. Um, the benefits of it, I think, for Google is since a lot, I mean, I'm in online classes, so, you know, everything for me is an online platform. But I think even, I can remember back into high school, you know, a lot of teachers used Edmodo, stuff like that. So even if you were in, in in class, there was still kind of an online portion of it, like where we could communicate um, 
with other people or ask questions and stuff like that. So I think the online platform for kids to get used to that um, and seeing due date reminders, you know, asking questions online, taking their notes online is really helpful for them. And then they can also access it from anywhere. There's no, oh, I left my paper at home. I can't do it. No, you can just log right on to Google Classroom and do your assignment there. It's also all in one place. Um, so like for this, um, the students are researching online um, and stuff like that, but they have all their notes in one place. And then when they go to create their presentation, they'll create it on Google Classroom. So it's all in one place. There's no losing stuff, you know, misplacing, anything like that. It's all in one place. Um, and I also think Google Classroom is really easy to use. Um, like down here, plus this is all you need, you know, for the whole Google Classroom, it's all super easy. It's, it's easy to edit. You just click on your thing, edit it. It saves it automatically. So there's no forgetting to save any of that. And then um, creating, like if kids use Google Slides, they can easily create a PowerPoint, um, anything like that. So it's super easy to use. Um, the Pen Pal website, the benefits of it, I think that the students really learn how to um, discuss with one another online. Um, I think learning web responsibility is really uh, important this day and age, learning that you can't just say and do whatever you want just because you're behind a, behind a computer, you don't know the person on the other end, you still have to be responsible. Um, it can also, like this forum, you know, that says, why do some people discriminate against one another? Everyone's going to have different ideas of that. And I think it's important for the kids to see different perspectives and learn from them and learn to know that it's okay that not everyone has, you know, their opinion. Um, and I almost think that this is set up kind of like a web quest, um, but all in one place. The kids are, you know, reading, going through all this, watching videos, and then there's things to talk about. Um, they're kind of finding their own knowledge per se, um, but it's all in one place and it's guided and directed. Um, and it's easy to collabor collaborate about um, information that's not usually discussed. Um, a lot of these um, projects are really elaborate and like all the stuff on here that these other teachers have found, I may not have found and I may have not thought of the questions that they thought of to ask. So my kids are gonna be getting questions and collaborating um, about things that they wouldn't necessarily do in the classroom if I didn't have a lot of other teachers helping put in um, work on it as well. And then the overview, my, so my lesson plan is what I do during reading rotations is, um, so we have whole group and then kids have 15 minute rotations. So they have 15 minutes a day, give or take, to work on this. And this is gonna be an inquiry project. So it's kind of on their own. Um, I, I want to say self-paced. They have a due date, but I don't tell them, um, you know, I did tell them have your person picked out by today, but I don't, you know, follow them step by step. Okay, you need to have this part done. You need to have this part done. I kind of let them work at their own pace, um, but they do have a due date, so they have to keep track of that. Um, so as far as my instructional strategies go, it is kind of an on your own. They've learned, we go to library lessons and they learn how to use, um, if I can find it on here, um, all of these databases that are on my school's website, you know, Pebble Go, World Book, Britannica, all that. So they know how to use that and um, they know the expectations of inquiry time. They know the expectations of using the databases, researching what they're supposed to be doing um, and things like that. So, my lesson plan, um, what the kids are going to be doing is discussing with other kids from another country about iconic people from their country. And then my students are going to have to go fill out that um, graphic organizer about their life, their education, their accomplishments, their work that they've done. Um, and then at the end, they're going to create a monument to... Um, honor that person. They can draw the monument, they can create it on on the computer, you know, on a drawing app or whatever they want to do. Um, and then at the end, we have like one or two days during reading 
um, that we all share our inquiry projects. So my lesson objectives are during the assignment, the students will be able to communicate respectfully and effectively with peers. Um, that goes back to being digitally responsible and knowing that they can do and say whatever they want just because they're online. Um, and then they also will use the databases and books of their choosing to um, research their person. And then at the conclusion of the assignment, the students will be able to show a greater understanding of the person and present it to their peers. So there are some unwritten objectives of, you know, Google Classroom time management, um, self-paced, staying on task, but I think that goes for kind of every assignment. Um, and then there's a ton of standards, and I went through ISTE standards as well because we are using um, technology. So you have to look at those. Um, so the activities on day one, the students will be shown how to use the Pen Pal website because that will be new to them. Um, they'll have time to just kind of explore, look at different projects, not necessarily the one that we're going to be doing, but just to get themselves familiar with how the website works. Um, on day two and three, I want to show them the project, um, have them join it on the Pen Pal website, have them discuss with the peers, um, and have them find the person that they want to research about. Um, and then they'll kind of have the rest of the time, days four through ten, um, to research the person. It takes a lot of time, um, especially for second graders, to get on there, look at their, they're looking at their early life, education, family life, accomplishments, any other interesting facts, um, and then they'll be taking the notes on Google Classroom. Um, and then the students are going to, on days 10 and 11, start brainstorming their monuments if they want to draw it, build it, make it on the computer somehow. I don't care how they do that. That's all up to them. Um, and then they'll have two days to construct their monuments, however they want to do it. And then the last day, we all share with the class. And ideally, we will all um, have different people. So each kid um, sharing their person, it'll be new information to everyone else um, to get to know a lot of different people. Um, as far as the assessments go, um, I do walk around. Um, I am with a small group while kids are working on it, but I usually have a few minutes at the end um, or at the beginning that I kind of walk around, excuse me, make sure that they are on task, if they have questions, um, stuff like that. And then giving feedback, I will look at their Google Classrooms every day to see where they are. Um, if they're struggling, maybe they have too much information, not enough information, stuff like that. And I can leave them feedback on there. Um, and then I'm also going to assess when they give their presentations. And I'm not necessarily looking for that the monument is perfect and the monument makes total sense about why they chose it because they're in second grade. And they might say, I want to make a house because he lived in a house and that's fine. I'm looking more for that they learned how to discuss with people, that they learned how to use Google Classroom, that they learned time management, that they um, just kind of went through all the steps. Um, even just getting up there and presenting for second graders, I know sometimes that's really hard for them. So kind of the unwritten objectives are important as well. Um, and then this obviously is a handout that I showed you um, on Google Classroom. Um, so the way um, demonstrating using the technology for my lesson objectives, I've kind of already done that. Um, here's the Pen Pal website that they'll be using um, and learning how to discuss with people they can do on there. And then taking notes, learning how to use Google Classroom, their time management, and also Google Classroom will be used for the presentations. Um, if they will all do some kind of slideshow or um, app on the iPad, how they'll organize their information to show the students. Um, and then again, the monument is up to them, however they want to make that. Um, and then what students can gain from the technology is um, online interactions with students who they don't necessarily know. Um, note taking online. I know that when I was starting my college classes, even when I went to class, um, I took my computer, I took notes online, I didn't write it down. Um, and then they'll also have practice with online reminders, like on Google Classrooms upcoming, it'll tell them 
when things are due, um, where they're at, how much more time they have. So they'll really have to practice um, time management skills with that. Um, with the pen pal website, they will learn digital responsibility, you know, doing what they're supposed to do, speaking nicely to others, that kind of thing. Um, and then there are also due dates on the pen pal website up here. It says, you know, like April 23rd, April 30th, they want these done because there's other people who are, you know, counting on them to discuss their information as well. So they will have to, you know, move along there, make sure they're getting those done so other people can use their information. Um, challenges that I suspect if there's any student that has a physical disability, I always worry about that. I haven't come across it yet, but I can imagine that it'd be challenging, you know, fine motor skills, typing, using things on the computer. Um, would be challenging for them and then there's also when you're on the computer or iPads or whatever you're on There's a lot of distractions, you know, even just going to the databases You could get lost in those databases and look at whatever you want So kids are really going to have to monitor themselves and kind of keep themselves on track um, and the successes of I've done a lot of inquiry time projects um, and they really feel like accomplished at the end because pretty much they did it on their own. I laid it out, I guided it for them, but they took the reins. They did it all on their own. Um, and I didn't teach this lesson to a class, but I did teach, um, they had to choose an American hero and make a um, monument of them. And they used the databases all the same. Um, so I kind of just added this. Um, for this class, this um, discussion part, this pen pal website that I found. Um, and so I think it was really neat. The kids really got a lot out of it. Um, and I'm excited to use the pen pal website with my actual students. I haven't done it yet. Um, but I know that inquiry time projects, letting students kind of create research and do things on their own. Um, kind of they have two weeks um, to work on it and so it's kind of a long time but students I know on my first inquiry project they thought oh I have two weeks I'll research the first day and the next day is I'll kind of play around in the databases and then they realized they really needed those full two weeks to get it done so I th on the second inquiry project that we did they really buckled down time management a lot of them um, finished early some of them finished on time but I didn't have any students finishing late um, like I did the first time. So um, those are my two tools, and I hope you learned a lot from it. Bye.